was in Italy and I had a GoPro session on my head. It was the first cube camera. And I was filming myself exploring an abandoned paper mill. Now there's no one watching me and it doesn't really matter because I don't care. Just here to uh, show everyone my cat, Chester. Check this out, I built this for him. How do I turn the camera around? Here we go. What you would see as an ordinary box for a mattress is now a fortress. Hey, bud. Say hi. Yeah. I don't know if anyone's gonna come. He's got food, he's got water. He's a good boy. Come here. Let's feed you some uh, dinner. You want dinner? Yeah, you want dinner. Hi, Zoe. How you doing? There's two people in here. I'm gonna feed Chester dinner and he's gonna go crazy, which is really funny. Where's his bowl? Chester, come here. Come up. Yeah, say hi to everyone. A lot of people said I shouldn't give them fancy feasts. I'm still new to cat ownership. It's been like six months. Eventually I want to get them on a raw diet or cook them, cook them healthy food because I want them to live as long as possible. But that's a lot of work. I already struggle cooking for myself. So for now, it's fancy feast. Chester's good. Uh, Stella and Chewy brand. Okay, I'll check it out. I give him eons dry food and I give him fancy fees. Sometimes I put some beef broth in the dry food. When he hears the, the can open, he goes crazy. Ready for dinner, buddy? You ready? All right, we're gonna show everyone one of my favorite things. This is one of my favorite parts. This is one of the best parts about Chester. It's funny, actually, when I first got him in here, he was so antsy for the food and I had it right here and he tried to jump for it and he landed in this trash bin and landed in the trash and jumped out. It was hilarious. Come on. Here he goes. Watch his little butt. Go, come on. Go, go, go. Go, go. Yeah. There you go. Good boy. He's happy. Yeah. Yeah, it's wild to think he, the vet said he's only two to three years old. So I don't know who ever owned him. I know my neighbors tried to take him in for about a week and they said he was spraying like crazy. So perhaps that's how he learned to be potty trained, even though many people have commented and said cats just instinctually know to do that, but he's definitely not feral. He's always been friendly. Met him the first day I went to the land. He was standing on a old couch that was abandoned just in some overgrowth. His color has changed. Um, his coat has changed. When I first rescued him, it was super thick like it is now. And he definitely shed a bunch of fur over the summer and got kind of lighter in color. And he was less orange and more yellow. And now he's back to more orangish tan but he's doing good. His coat's nice. I don't even really have to groom him much. Like I have brushes and whatnot, but he takes such good care of himself and I've only seen two hairballs ever. So he's a good boy. Richie. Yeah. Any other questions? I don't really know what to tell people. I'm just trying to kind of mitigate some of the comments and I got 2000 comments on that last video. I went camping and I came home. I had zero service over the weekend and I went from like 2000 in, or subscribers on YouTube to 6,000, a thousand plus comments. So it's been crazy. I didn't realize how big the cat community really is. 20 pound short haired orange boy. That's a chonkster. Sounds like a unit. Would have liked him. Yeah. Give the people what they want. 
Uh, am I gonna build a new house in the property? Uh, I'm definitely gonna build a cabin of sorts. It won't be a cabin, like a, a classic wood cabin. It'll be framed up, you know, standard carpentry. My goal is to learn the basics of, you know, home building from start to scratch. So luckily I do have a lot of friends who are pretty intelligent and skilled and they have been pretty forthcoming with information and they seem like they're willing to help me and I'm happy to reimburse my friends or other people for their time, but I wanna be a fly on the wall and learn as much as I can. Um, the whole the whole goal for me with this property and purchase is to learn how to be more sustainable and to provide for myself. Um, the work on the homestead's crazy. I mean, the, the episodes I'm uploading are from six months ago. So that's, that's right when I bought the land, it was freezing cold. Uh, I had a great deal of anxiety between trying to rescue Chester and secure the, the, you know, the old wood stoves. I just, it was a lot of work. And, um, you know, you can only go up there for so many days at a time and survive without running water and electricity, unless you're super rugged like Richard who used to live there. But um, overall, it's, it's come a long way. All the garbage is cleaned up. I got two dumpsters in there. I've had an excavator guy come do a bunch of work. I've got a storage container now. So you'll see the progression in the episodes. Um, EJ, I got roughly 25 acres for $71,000. Um, I started at 45,000 because the property was on the market for a little while because there is no utilities. Um, I'm gonna be forced to do solar, which I'm not against. I wanna have a fully sustaining property. I'm a low key, minimal prepper, but I just like the idea of having a property that I can always count on to be there and I can enjoy as a personal paradise. Um, let's see. Any permaculture, I'm definitely gonna plant a ton of apple trees next year. Um, I've got a bunch of smart pots, so I will do some gardening. Um, the work I do is video work, so I travel all the time for shoots. So it's kind of difficult to go full full-time homesteading, like the idea of having farm animals would be awesome, but it's just not realistic until I'm older. Um, but I definitely do wanna get some farming going, maybe build some raised beds with a lot of the old scrap wood I have. I'm definitely gonna drill a well, not looking forward to how much that's gonna cost. Um, I really don't wanna spend 20 to 30 grand, but it would be nice to have my own water. A lot of my neighbors have just springs, but I really wanna go the full nine yards and and drill a well, that's gonna be one of my top goals next year. Um, top goals for next year, definitely be pit bike track for my little dirt bikes, um, maybe a pond, uh, clear the river area a little better so I have a better camp zone down there and uh, plant trees, kind of build a, I don't wanna put a fence up, but I wanna have some sort of boundary on the edge of my land. And uh, yeah, there's just so many things. You have, you know, you have an idea in your head. You're like, oh, I'm gonna have this done by, by this time. That's not how it works. Between dealing with weather, especially the summer we had in Vermont was ridiculously rainy. So there's been a lot of challenges. Will Chester get a sibling? Chester technically has a sister named Fiona and that's my girlfriend's cat. And when we live together, they'll be buddies. And right now he does have a dog brother named Joey. I'd like to get another cat, but like I said, I do travel a lot and uh, even just taking Chester to and from the land. Like he's a good sport about riding in the car. He does get meowy sometimes. I have to take it easy on the windy roads so he doesn't get mad, but having two cats in the car, who's to say the other one would even wanna go up to the land? Not that they would have to, but I'm just gonna try and focus on taking good care of this little guy for now. And uh, I play with him a lot and he has good, good company, so. I'm definitely gonna build a cabin for the dragon and his wagon. The other cats, so yeah, there's a bunch of other cats on the land. Um, I have trail cameras set up all over, so I have so many pictures of cats lurking the land at night. Um, there's a big gray one. He's, I believe he is one of the neighbor's cats. And there is a big tom cat that's like, he's a weird tabby pattern, and apparently he's a full feral. I've only seen him once when I first came to the land. I haven't seen him since. I've seen him on my trail camera. Otherwise, the rest of the cats are, owned respectively by the neighbors. They're just outdoor cats. Let's see, it's hard to keep up with all the comments and questions. 
Septic, yeah, we'll see about septic. I might do compost toilets. I'm gonna have to look into that. Solar, definitely going solar. Frank from Connecticut, what's up? Scotty, your camera quality is the best I've seen on any channel. That was, um, I thank you so much for saying that. Uh, I do professional video work, so that was one of my goals with this. I, you know, there's tons of great homesteading channels on YouTube, but none of them really have the quality. A lot of them are filmed on iPhones, which isn't bad, and GoPros, but I'm shooting on a cinema camera, Canon C70. I've invested, you know, the last 10 years plus in this craft, and unfortunately, I can't shoot it the way I want. I wish I could clone myself and have second me running around getting the shots I really want. It's been one of the most difficult aspects of this process is trying to get work done whilst moving a big tripod around, setting up GoPros for time lapses, trying to capture as much as I can and, and stay on task. So it's been tough, but you know, when you get a comment like that, it means a lot. So I do appreciate that and the quality will continue to grow. And I've stacked so much cool cinematic footage that I haven't really used yet. So when I do an end of the year or end of season recap video, I'm going to have something really special for everyone to watch. Drone, yes, I have a DJI Mavic Pro 2, North Idaho. What up? Idaho is beautiful. I've been to Sun Valley before for work and skied. Um, blessings from London. Love London. Thank you. Yeah, that's about all I got right now. Let's see what Chester's doing. He's chilling in this box fortress and made him. There you are. You're a good boy. 75 people watching. I'm humbled. I appreciate you guys. What do you think, Chester? Where's your little thing? Where's your banana? Let's see. Oh, there you go. Get it. You love your little banana. Get it, get it, good boy. A little rat destroyer, keeper of the land. Yes, yeah, such a good boy. Yeah, just a... He's doing good, he's a happy little dude. How about this one? holes are pretty strategically placed i did a good job does chester hunt around my house i don't let him out around my house i live in a suburbia area and i do not want him to get hit by a car or stolen by somebody because he is friendly he is chipped but it's just not worth the risk to me so he gets his yayas out when he comes to land and yeah he always brings me decapitated mice into the trailer he's he's a good little hunter it's tough though because sometimes i see him jump on him and he like plays with them. He likes to torture them, which I'm not really fond of, but he's an animal, so. Am I surprised by the response? I'm blown away. I didn't know there's, I mean, I guess I should have known. People freaking love cats and animals, but it's crazy. It's, it's definitely, uh, it's cool to see. And the, I'd say the coolest thing about the homesteading community is it's a very positive group of people, you know? There's not a ton of negativity. Everyone's pretty supportive. And there's young people and old people who are all interested in the same thing. So that combined with a cat and a good story is a good combination. Noodles, I miss you, brother. I love you. Yes. Yeah, he's safe indoors. It gets a little nerve-wracking when I let him out the land, but it would feel wrong not to. I just... I can't leave him indoors all the time. You can tell he's got the hunt in him and he's he's an adventurous boy like his daddy. New Zealand, never been there. I wanna go there so bad. All the videos I've seen here last winter, are you gonna be putting up material from the work you did over the summer? Yep, I'm just posting every Tuesday. I kind of did myself a favor by backlogging episodes and it's kind of nice to not post them right away because I can look back and I'm not selective about what I share, but you just, you have a better idea of how things are now and how things should be presented. And it's very straightforward editing. I just put everything on a timeline chronologically and slap the story together, but it's nice having a backlog so I can kind of get ahead because it is time consuming to edit and I do this as a job too. So I try and get ahead and cut a couple episodes and have a rough idea of what's coming because so much of the work I've done, I've almost, I haven't forgotten, but 
it's a big reminder of like, oh, Jesus, we did that, we did this. There's, it's wild to look back even just six months later. And that was honestly my whole intention with this project was I was a little reluctant to put it on YouTube because I like my privacy and I didn't know if I wanted to put myself out there like this, but at the end of the day, I wanted to document this whole process so I can look back on it and enjoy it. And if other people can get inspired and I can generate some income through views, I mean, hell, if that can go towards helping build the land up, then it'd be silly not to do that, especially with the camera skills I have. So that's, that's about the goal. Life can be dangerous, but quality of life is more important than safety. Agreed. Got to take risks. My cats hunt mice around my house. Chester is a good one. Another winter is coming indeed. It's going to be a big one. Hopefully the El Nino dumps some snow in Vermont because I am ready to ski. The night of the fire was crazy. Yeah, you're telling me. Oh, my gosh. We uh, actually, this past weekend, I was at the land and we cinched all that up and got the whole fireplace set up perfect for this winter. So it is very cozy now. Man, bear, pig. I, I feel that I would, I don't know what I would do if Chester didn't come back, but luckily I think when he hears that sound of the wet food can open he knows ever since day one and he's always showed his face whenever i'm at the land the nice thing now is now that i have a mower and i have been able to mow the whole perimeter around the trailer and the area that i like and want to keep mowed he stays within that area and then he'll just stay on the border of it and jump into the tall grass to get rats so he stays close to dad i know i wish there was footage nicholas i wish there was footage Peter should have been filming. Yes. He has hidey holes. He, it's, it's funny, half the time I'm looking for him or I call for him, he's underneath the trailer, like literally right below me. He's definitely very good at hiding and he's also extremely evasive. He can climb trees like nobody's business and come right back down him. Thanks, Sandy. I'm gonna give him a big color right now. What do you think, you little turkey, huh? He's so cute. Mm, deep purrs. If only you knew how popular you are. <laughs> You're cooler than me, that's for sure. I don't know many that are cooler than you. He's such a good boy. Look at that tail. Yeah. Property over the winter. Uh, just going to do a bunch of small different tasks. I'm going to try and use my chainsaw and take down a bunch of trees to potentially dry out and use next summer. Uh, I want to start working on a sauna down by the river, like a teepee sauna. So I'm going to cut down a bunch of trees for that because I do have an old small wood stove that I found in Richard's trailer that I angle grinded and fixed up. So that will be included in the teepee episode. I've done a lot of restoration work on his old old wood stove, grill tops, all kinds of stuff. I just kind of fell in love with putting the respirator on and the goggles and going to town with an angle grinder and seeing the rust turn to beautiful, fresh metal again. Dirt bike track. There'll be tons of riding vids. Uh, used to have big bikes. Now I just have little bikes. I've got a KLX 110 pit bike that's not modded out engine wise, but it has all the aesthetic mods. It's pretty fresh. And then I've got just a CRF 125 extra bike. So anyone comes to the land and wants to learn how to ride or they want to ride the pit bike track they can love dirt bikes i'll have a bunch of exploring and riding vids next summer i'm going to have a couple riding vids coming this summer so you'll see those in the next couple months and yeah brap brap nation the river yeah the there's brief brief view of the river i think in episode two with my girlfriend hannah we walked down there maybe it was episode three um, there'll be more clips of it. We did some good soaking in it this summer, kind of dammed up a little mini soak hole. So the river is good. It's actually a creek. I wish it was a river, but it does seem to flow most of the year. Um, dry summers, probably not. Auckland, New Zealand, super cool. New Zealand's epic. Sweeties, sweeties. Have you thought about putting a tiny camera on Chester? I actually have, and I'm going to. I'm going to do an episode like that. I'm going to put my GoPro on him and let him roam around. You want to go out there? There you go, huh? I 
Found you because of your episode and then binged all your episodes. Thank you. It's, it's a big process and we're only getting started. It's going to be so cool. It's going to be so cool. And there's a full living space framed. And eventually I want to build some smaller cabins. So when I have friends come stay, they have their own living space to stay in. It's crazy what a cat can do. I appreciate you guys being here. Very cool. Jester does look good. He's doing good. He's a good boy. Let's see if there's any other questions in here I missed. Mm -mm -mm. Are the ear mites gone? The, yeah, the ear mites are definitely gone. The ear mites were gone like within a week of him going to the vet. And then about a month later, I got him neutered. And you'll see the after effects of that. I let him recover for about two or three days. And then I brought him up to the land and he just sat in the trailer high on drugs. I think there will be a Chester playlist in my future. Sabbath, what a name. That's a cool cat name. I am joining late. Did you say when you hope to have your cabin finished? Uh, ideally, it would be finished next year by the end of fall, 2024, but the reality of that is probably minimal. It'll depend on my income, how much I work, how much time I have to dedicate up there. Um, I'm probably gonna focus on a lot of other stuff infrastructure wise and maybe getting a gravel pad set up for where the building site will be. And then realistically, it'll probably get built in year three. But if I'm ambitious and I have the time on my hands and the funds to do so, I would very much like to get a cabin, or sorry, a living space built by the end of next year. Do we have bears? We do. We have bears in Vermont, and surprisingly, Vermont's one of the only states that still allows people to hunt bears with dogs. Not that I do that, but it's, yeah, it's Vermont. Everyone that's binge watched the videos, I do greatly appreciate it. Are you keeping any of the previous owners' wedding family albums for posterity? I have the previous owners, like, entire life history and photo albums it's wild the apparently his family came sorry bad connection long story short uh i've kept everything and i'm probably going to do an episode about him um i'm not going to get too deep into his life but just talk about maybe how his life was how he lived there life was how he lived there and some of his history and ideally i'm going to return all these photos i've got to reach out to the the family who i bought the land from and send them back so they can have them because there's pictures of his kids and his grandkids and who knows how old they are now. They're probably older than me. Uh, my property is roughly an hour away from where I live. So it's, I lived in California for five years. I'm born and raised in Vermont. When you live in California, driving an hour is like a 20 minute drive. So for me, it's not a big deal. And luckily for me, it puts me in an area where there's minimal disturbance from the outside world and I can do what I want. Thanks, Daniel. Yeah, I figure a nice quote. Try and, I always try and find something that's semi-applicable to the episode or what I'm going through. It's, gotta love a good quote. It can be hard to get the albums to the family. Thankfully, I have the family's address. I actually, before I bought the land, I sent them a letter, which is a little unconventional, but just confiding in them how bad I wanted the land. It was basically a three and a half month process of me trying to purchase this land. So, I do have contact with them. Am I a hunter? Uh, I am an aspiring hunter. I do have a compound bow and I've got a nice collection of guns. I just need to get my hunting license. I have a tree stand on my property from the past owner and I have a great property to deer hunt and turkey hunt. And I would like to learn how to be sustainable. I'm not against hunting. I think it's ethical, especially with all the mass produced food that comes out these days um so yeah that's a big goal of mine is to become a very avid hunter both bow and rifle i can't wait to see it come to fruition too but I'm just trying to enjoy the moment as they say you got to enjoy the process this is the good life right now talking to all you people on youtube what a world what a weird world we live in but I dig it. 
Dirt bike track's gonna be awesome, it's so much fun. There's nothing like burning laps on a dirt bike track. You just get faster and faster and find the right lines, especially on little bikes, it's so fun. Have I built a home before? No, I have home, zero home build, building experience. I have demo experience from destroying the, the old gross trailer on the land, that's about it. Um, building wise, I'm gonna hire some people out and hopefully get some help from some friends and just try and be a fly on the wall and see if they'll allow me to learn from them and hopefully go from there. I've been investing in the right tools to build stuff and eventually just gonna come down to saving money for lumber and insulation and all the little things that you never think about that go into building a structure. Yeah, luckily all my neighbors hunt. Um, the neighbors at the top of the road, I let their two boys hunt on my land because they did it before I bought the land and I'm trying to be cool with everyone around me. So I allow them to hunt in the land still and there's definitely a bunch of great resourceful people on my road that can help teach me a lot. New York City, what up, what up? I come down to the city sometimes. I like to explore abandoned insane asylums. I've done a lot of crazy stuff around New York City, I will say that much. It is a wild place. I've been into some pretty interesting buildings and abandoned spaces. And I will share some of those adventures too. I've got backlog footage from the last eight years of abandoned exploring and so much cool stuff, traveling. And I do intend to start posting some of that. I was super reluctant in the past because a lot of the buildings were still intact. And as an abandoned explorer, it's kind of a no-no if you have any credibility to blow up spots on YouTube. So now that many of them are demolished, I will start releasing stuff from the archives. That's pretty wild stuff. Slovenia is good. I've been to Slovenia. I, uh, I've been to Slovenia, Bosnia, and Croatia, and I had an incredible experience. There's a video of it on my Instagram. I was at an abandoned Air Force base on the border of Bosnia and Croatia, and there was a town that seemed like, in my opinion, was totally abandoned. And I met probably an 85-year-old woman who didn't speak a lick of English, and she invited me into her farmhouse, and I went in. She gave me shots of homemade vodka, fed me, we hung out, we spoke, we didn't understand each other. And I've had some of my Bosnian friends translate it and they said she was talking about how her son had died in the war and her husband, and I reminded her of her son, just wild stuff. So Slovenia, the, the whole area, love it. Croatia, Croatia and Slovenia reminded me much of Vermont. I was in the country, like the countryside, not near the coast. And it was just a lot of rolling green hills and agriculture, so I very much appreciated that. I appreciate your appreciation of my energy, friend. That's what it's all about. Eamon and Beck are Canadian YouTubers. Found out they needed building permits. Well, in the state of Vermont, you need building permits in every township unless it's noted. There are about 15 towns that have zero zoning laws. Um, the town I am in uh, doesn't have the strictest zoning, and you do have to submit building permits, but it's not overly stringent based on the information I've been provided by my neighbors. So for anything I'm trying to build, which will be small scale, it's, it shouldn't be an issue. That's once again why I'm happy about where I bought my land. We're going on 30 minutes here. This is wild. What a treat. Oh, I've heard so much about New Zealand. Such a cool, such a cool country. I definitely need to come down there. So much good cliff jumping and beautiful nature. And I really want to go to Australia too because I'm obsessed with saltwater crocodiles. Bring Chester down there and I will go down and uh... <laughs> Yep. Yeah. well. Building type I'm going for, ooh, yes, not a log cabin. Oh, just a simple framed up. God, I wish I had a drawing or a diagram. I have photos on my phone, but I can't show you because I'm using my phone. Um, basically just a rectangular box building uh, that's more long, you know, than wide. And it will have a nice slope roof. We'll have some windows on the back at the upper level. So like if you're looking at a little kitchen area, you could look out these small windows. 
And then on the left and the right side, I'm hoping to use some old sliding glass doors from the land and pull them out from their trim and then frame them into the place so there's big windows on both sides of the building. And then on the front, I'd like to have either two or one giant sliding glass door that looks out over the field. And then the wood stove would be in one of the corners and the bed space would be on the opposite side. So it would be a very open floor plan that would breathe nice view of the land and uh, hopefully a nice porch off the front. I'm not gonna fly to Australia with a cat, don't worry. <laughs> Square footage, I'm not exactly sure yet. That stuff that I'm gonna do over this winter, there'll probably be an episode of me just drafting up ideas for building. Um, I also am gonna do a really cool episode uh, in like the second or third episode when my girlfriend Hannah was up, we took all of Richard's books home from the land and boy, oh boy, was he a bookworm. He has, I mean, I can grab some of them out of the back closet here. He had first edition Mark Twain novels, all kinds of old. I don't know if there's any, any super old one, but he has first edition Mark Twain's, Ernst Hemingway's. And they all hold notes, which is so cool. It just gives you a glimpse into his life. Yeah, Mark Twain. I have a cabin or multiple cabins built with shelves and these old books on those shelves. Emerson, look at that. That's wild. That is an old book. Ralph Waldo Emerson. Yeah, some cool stuff. Lowney's cookbook look at that uh, let's see what the print year is on this sucker oh gotta be careful with this spot 1912 get some good recipes out you laid carpet i have a a neighbor on the right side of my field, his name is, well, it's his name, but he, we call him the Russian and he lived there when Dick did. And he told me all sorts of information about Dick. It's been interesting hearing stories from the different neighbors. But yeah, he laid carpet. He was the first person that lived on the road. So apparently he lived there when the road was a total mud pit in the spring and interesting it was to live out there and how rugged. Chester is chipped. He's chipped. He's chipped, he's neutered now. He's full running meat monster. 25 pound tuxedo, oh my God. What a chonkster, I love it. I love thick boys. Chester looks very thick, but he also has a lot of hair, so it's deceiving. When he got weighed by the vet, I think he was 11 pounds. I'd wager he's probably at 14-ish now. Uh, uh, uh. Do you want a family later? I do want a family. I don't know if I'm going to live full time up there. We'll see. It's it's far removed from hospitals and and the necessities. So in terms of raising a family, it's not the most ideal in some regard, but We'll see, I'm always gonna be up there, always gonna be developing it, and I would like to live up there at least part-time, if not full-time, so just gonna take, it's gonna take time and a lot of sweat equity. Cool. Well, I think we answered a good amount of questions here. We'll give anyone a, Keo, what up, baby? Good to see you, buddy. I have so many cool friends. Keo's one of them. And the dragon and Nick Henry, they're all in here. That's real love right there. Gold Russian garnets, woo. Yeah, I would love to pan for some gold. You never know. You never know what minerals and gems might be lurking all about it there's going to be so many cool activities there's endless space for activities well i'm going to sign out i appreciate everyone joining this live stream 
Panned in Alaska, that sounds cool. Are you developing your land into something you can make an income from? Well, you know, I never really thought that would be a possibility until this Chester video absolutely exploded. Um, the one thing I've been trying to like emphasize to people is I'm not a cat influencer and my YouTube channel is not gonna become 100% cat videos. It's just, if anything, hopefully people will tune in because of the relationship I have with Chester and to see it grow while also seeing the land develop because that was and is the main focus of this channel. Um, but make no mistake, Chester is along for the ride 100% of the way. Um, you won't see him in the next three episodes because I had to let him settle into home life. I was scared to bring him back up there because he wasn't neutered and all the neighbor's cats aren't spayed. So if they go in heat, he's gone. He's already had two litters of kittens, according to the neighbors. So he got his yayas out before he got the snip. I'm not on Patreon. There's definitely a lot of things that I will do that I need to do. There is someone impersonating me on TikTok. It's Justin Jenny YouTube or YT. That is not me. If you're on TikTok, I'm at OTRCMP, Otter Camp. Um, so that's one thing I've been bummed about. I'm already realizing the shitty aspects of this whole endeavor is people try and steal your hard work and make money off it but the internet is the wild west so what are you gonna do but this is the main source of content youtube and i despise content thieves as well and try and come to my property see what happens it's annoying it's like i bust my ass up there and i bring my camera equipment which i spend my hard-earned money on rescue a cat spend my money to do that and then someone's got a tiktok channel saying help me raise more money to rescue cats impersonating me it's frustrating to say the least but we shall prevail and i appreciate you guys see you later anna or ina or 3na appreciate you all right everybody i think that's gonna be it i'm not on patreon yet nia but I, maybe that's something i should look into in the future i just don't know what additional content I could provide that would be uh, worthy of you guys paying. I don't wanna try and take money from people if it's not well-deserved. <clears throat> I think ultimately I just need to focus on continuing to post videos every Tuesday and sharing this journey and let the channel grow organically. And I did report the account, I reported it twice and then the guy blocked me and then he reached out to me from another account and he basically tried to extort me and asked for $1,500 to buy the account from him, which, <laughs> what a joke. I don't have $1,500 to give to somebody for a TikTok account that goes towards the land. Anyway, I appreciate you guys. I hope you enjoyed this live stream. I hope it answered some questions. Chester's probably taking a nap somewhere, so I'm not gonna disturb him, but he was around in the beginning if you're just tuning in now so you can scroll back and see that appreciate the support there'll be a new video out tomorrow at 7 a.m and every tuesday thereafter so stay tuned and i will kiss chester for all of you guys good night and give him some belly scratches you can count on that much love everybody i appreciate your support have a good night